M.2 drives have surged in popularity among the recent months, and although they aren't exactly budget-friendly options, they are very desirable due to their small form factor and impressive read and write speeds, which are miles ahead of regular SATA SSDs and hard drives. Now, these M.2 drives consist of a few NAND memory flash modules, which tend to get quite hot under load. This 250GB 960 EVO can get as hot as 60 degrees C in my testing, but I've seen similar drives hit upwards of 95 degrees C. In that territory, it's common to see these drives throttle back their read and write speeds, and hence your performance will take a hit. Now, some of you may have seen this before included on some motherboards, particularly from MSI. This is an M.2 shield, and it was first introduced at the start of the year for Z270 boards, and their main function is to be installed over an M.2 drive and help dissipate some of the heat from those memory modules. Now, we can talk about whether this is a heat shield or heat sink, but at the end of the day, it aims to improve M.2 drive temperatures under significant load. Now, when they first released, the results were very mixed. Gamers Nexus, for example, showed around a 4 degree increase in load temperatures when using the M.2 shield, and Steve from Hardware on Box didn't see much change at all, about a 1 degree swing either way, depending on the fan configuration. Now, why am I revisiting this? Well, since then, MSI have given us a bit of an iteration on the M.2 shield design, and now we're getting a significantly thicker thermal pad. There's still no fin stack or anything like that to help dissipate the heat, but at least we're still getting a little bit of an improvement from that abysmally thin thermal pad that we saw on the Z270 version. So today we're revisiting it alongside the Samsung 960 EVO M.2 drive and by using a K-type thermocouple we're going to see whether we get an improvement in both idle and load temperatures. I experimented for about an hour to find the hottest memory module on the M.2 drive and then the hottest area on that chip which seemed to be mainly in the center but a little toward the top right. The K-type thermocouple was then taped down with insulation tape with the junction in contact with the hottest area. And finally, I used sequential read and write in Iometer for 30 minutes just to see how hot we could really get, and this would pretty much be a worst case scenario. Also, all testing was done in an open case with plenty of airflow, the NZXT S340 Elite to be exact. Now, as always, I'm not showing the raw data here, and I've adjusted the temperatures based on the ambient temperature in the room. So all the data fits an ambient temperature of 20 degrees C, and as we can see, the M.2 shield does seem to be doing its job. At idle, there's not much difference at all, but at load, we can see about a 4.5 degree reduction, which is significant and was repeatable as I ran the test three times. That might not seem like a lot at first, but that could be the difference between thermal throttling under load or maintaining your read and write speeds. Talking about performance, let's look at if there's any real difference between the M.2 shield installed or when it's off. Now, I didn't expect much since we weren't hitting very high temperatures in the first place, but I was very surprised to see a small improvement of both read and write speeds when we had the shield installed. I'm not really sure how to explain this other than perhaps maybe the cooling was better on some of the other surface mounted components that may have been otherwise throttling. If you guys have any idea on how this happened, then please drop those down in the comment section below. So to sum up, if your motherboard has one of these M.2 shields, take a look at it and see if the thermal pad underneath is sufficient. If it is, then chances are that it's a good idea to install it over your M.2 drive, as it will improve temperatures and most likely performance as well. MSI at least have improved on what was otherwise a fairly questionable design, which had a lot of people scratching their heads. If you happen to have one of these, I'd love to hear your experience with it down below. Thanks again for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see similar testing like this in the future, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.